Welcome back. So just to review what we were doing in the last video, um, if you're watching this in the fat oxidation playlist, um, in the last video we talked a little bit about um, what happens when you beta oxidize a fatty acid that has an odd number of carbons. So if you have a fatty acid, a fatty acid, let's say you know it had, let's say it had 17 carbons, right? Well, when you do one round of beta oxidation, you'd get down to 15 carbons because each round of beta oxidation removes two carbons. And then the next round, you'd get down to 13 carbons and you would keep going two carbons at a time until you get down to seven carbons. You'd go down one more, you'd go to five carbons and then you would do one more round of beta oxidation. So this right here, this would be one more round of beta oxidation. And you would end up with this molecule right here. And this molecule is called propionyl, propionyl CoA. Okay, and propionyl CoA has a separate catabolic pathway that's really short. Um, that will end up producing succinyl CoA. Okay, let's actually look at it really quickly. Um, we have a whole video on this, so I'm just going to kind of fly through this. Propionyl CoA will react with propionyl CoA carboxylase, and you'll get this molecule right here. This molecule is called D methylmalonyl. This is D methylmalonyl CoA. And then an epimerase, which is essentially a stereoisomerase is going to isomerize this D position carbon into an L configuration. And so this molecule, this is L-methylmalonyl, L-methylmalonyl CoA. Okay, And that basically brings us to the terminal enzyme in propionyl CoA catabolism. Okay, So that brings us to this reaction. This is the reaction of methylmalonyl CoA mutase. And this is a really interesting reaction because it uses um, this coenzyme referred to as adenosyl cobalamin. So let's sort of let's sort of break up that name into its constituents. The adenosyl in the name refers to the fact that it that part of the molecule adenosyl cobalamin is a five prime deoxy adenosine, a five prime deoxy adenosine. And then the last part of the name, which is cobalamin, that refers to the fact that it is a derivative of vitamin B12. Okay, So anytime you hear the name cobalamin, you should immediately think of B12. And it turns out that B12, or in this case adenosyl cobalamin, is going to be used to effectively move this group that I've circled in orange, this thioester-CoA, ultimately onto this carbon right here. And what you see is that that gives us this molecule, which is succinyl CoA. Okay, and the name mutase in the name sort of implies that it's taking some group and moving it to another part of the molecule. That's what a mutase does. If we come down here and look at adenosyl cobalamin um, or adenosyl B12. Um, what you should notice is that this group up here that they've sort of highlighted in red, this part right here is the 5 prime deoxyadenosine. This is the 5 prime deoxyadenosine. Um, basically what you would find, let me sort of blow up the adenosine ring. Okay, so, so here I'm drawing the ribose ring of the adenosine. So of course up here you have adenine because it's derived from ATP. Um, and then you have this carbon right here. And one of the forms that this carbon can exist in is it'll have two hydrogens on it, but it'll be overall neutral because it'll have a radical electron. Okay, And one of the reasons you call it 5 prime deoxyadenosine is because if you label these carbons according to ribose configuration, this is 1 prime, this is 2 prime, this is, of course, 3 prime, 4 prime. And if you look at the 5 prime carbon, unlike normal adenosine, it doesn't have an oxygen on it. So you call it, you call it deoxyadenosine because the oxygen is missing. And to understand why that is, go watch the video on cobalamin adenosyl transferase. 
and it'll explain to you how you end up losing that oxygen and generate a radical. But suffice it to say, that group right here, that's what this is, okay? And this radical is used to carry out the reaction of essentially moving this thioester CoA onto the carbon right here that I denoted in blue, okay? And um, we're going to look at the mechanism of this enzyme now. So you probably guessed at this point that this video is also in the Corin Physiology and Biochemistry playlist. So it's in the B12 section also. Okay, so at this point, now what we have is we start out the mechanism with um, the corin ring system. So all these nitrogens here that are co they're coordinating this cobalt here in the center. So this cobalt will start out the mechanism in the three plus oxidation state, and then the corin ring system is of course chelating it there in the center. At rest, the deoxyadenosyl group right here is in the anionic form, and it's forming an electrostatic interaction with the cobalt three plus. The next step is going to be radical formation. So basically, um, let me do the mechanics of steps in green. So one of these electrons right here on this adenosine or this deoxyadenosine anion is going to be transferred onto the cobalt. Notice I used a fish hook arrow to denote that it's just a one electron transfer. So what that generates is cobalt in the two plus state. Again, the cobalt is going to be chelated in the corn ring system at all times. And that generates this deoxyadenosyl radical. And that's what's going to be used to carry out the reaction. So the first step in the mechanism is going to be a hydrogen abstraction. Okay, One of your radical um, mechanistic steps that you probably learned about in uh, freshman or sophomore organic chemistry. So this lone electron right here is going to come and it's going to abstract a hydrogen ultimately from the uh, methyl malonyl CoA and that puts a radical electron right here on this carbon that I'm going to highlight in purple. So that carbon as you see here now has a radical electron on it. Okay, So that's going to bring us to um, the next step of the mechanism and in the next step cobalt is going to end up reducing this carbon right here. So this carbon that I originally highlighted in purple is now going to get reduced. And the way that happens is through cobalt acting as the reducing agent and in the process it gets oxidized. So this this one of these electrons that's in an orbital out here for cobalt like this electron right here is going to come over here and it's going to reduce that carbon of the methylmalonyl CoA radical. And that's going to generate a meth methylmalonyl CoA anion that's shown right here. So this is the anionic form. This is the anionic form of methylmalonyl CoA. Okay? And this negative charge that's now on this carbon right here, it will form an electrostatic interaction with the cobalt 3 plus. Okay, now at this point what's going to happen is um, we're going to have an electronic rearrangement. And this step right here, this is the step that gives uh, this enzyme the mutase in its name. So in this step right here, we're going to transfer the thioester group onto that carbon that I just highlighted in green. So what's going to happen is this bond, let me highlight it in purple, this bond right here, is going to undergo a homolytic bond cleavage. Okay, So one of the electrons ends up on that carbon that has the carboxyl group. The other electron is going to come over here and it's going to couple with this one. right? So that's a coupling reaction. And then in the process, this electron that I have boxed in blue is then going to be um, reducing the cobalt 3 plus into the 2 plus oxidation state. Okay, And so now, again, you have the cobalt in the 2 plus oxidation state. And now you have a radical succinyl CoA. So this right here, this is a radical, radical succinyl CoA. Okay. Now keep in mind, we have this fully protonated deoxyadenosine in the active site that's part of the B12. And so now what's going to happen is you're going to get a hydrogen abstraction, but this time we're going to abstract it from the 5' deoxyadenosine. So hydrogen abstraction occurs. This lone electron is going to abstract a hydrogen here, and that's going to force a lone electron to go onto the 5' deoxyadenosine, and that's shown basically right here. 
And now the last step of the mechanism to restart the cycle is going to be to regenerate the anionic 5 prime deoxyadenosine. So what's going to happen is there's going to be some orbital out here with an electron in a, as part of the cobalt of the core and ring system, and that electron is going to reduce the radical 5 prime deoxyadenosine into now what we have as the ionic form or the anionic form we should say and in the process as cobalt gives up that electron the cobalt now is oxidized into the three plus state and so this right here regenerates the methyl malonyl coa mutase cycle but what I really want to look at now is we've now produced this molecule which is called succinyl coa and if you really think about what happens to this, this is of course going to go into the TCA cycle. So I hope this video gave you a little bit of intuition on the mechanism of methylmalonyl-CoA mutase. And just remember, um, this is one of the two enzymes in humans that's going to use vitamin B12 to perform um, some kind of basic metabolic reaction. So I hope this video helps. See you in the next video.